Welcome back. It is Monday morning once again. Well, technically, it's probably going to be afternoon by the time you're watching this, but you know what I mean. It's been something of a stormy weekend, I think it's fair to say, both weather-wise, physically, outside the window. It's awful, for instance, but also kind of online as well. So let's do something a bit different today. Let's have a look at some stuff that we've missed over the last month, two. I think one of them might be a bit more than two it's fine. We've got to them eventually, and that's the important bit. Let's relax and look at some tasty miniatures. Now, before we get into this, this video is sponsored by Into the AM, and you will hear more from them a little bit later on. But first, let's look at some gnomes. Let's look at some little, <laughs> some little cheeky gnomes. So this is a Blood Bowl team that I don't know how I missed. I don't know how I missed this, because frankly, the Blood Bowl teams, I love pretty much all of them, just varying degrees of loving them, and... Ever since, ever since I saw the little picture of the goose, I had to know where the goose was. Why was there a goose? What was it for? I mean, really, I mean, let's be, let's be fair. Let's be totally honest. It would have been a safe bet to assume that it was something to do with Blood Bowl, but there was a little part of me that was like, maybe there is some sort of goose-related warrior coming to AOS or Warcry, because that would be... I mean, also, Underworlds as well, it would fit there. The fact that you can make that sort of call when it comes to that side of Games Workshop's properties. I love that, but funnily enough, the goose was part of the Gnome Blood Bowl team. This, I don't know what it is about these. These feel like some sort of, some sort of thing from the past. Something that Games Workshop like would have done years and years ago, but brought into now. There's like, I don't know, the whimsy, the sheer whimsy, the silliness. It might just be me. It might just be me kind of attributing more different characteristics to these than are actually there, but I don't know. They they look great. I mean, I absolutely love them. The goose is fantastic. The fact that it's wearing a little hat is the best. The little pointy shoes are spot on. They've gone, they've just gone full, like, classic gnome, I guess. I think that's the only way to put it. Like, the sort of big pointy hats, the massive noses, the beards... I can't get over the beards. I know, look, I'm going to try not to keep bringing up the beards, but the beards are just that good. For a second, I thought that was a wolf. It's not. It's a badger. That's actively better. That's actively better. So we've got a goose. We've got a badger. <laughs> we've also got, what's this over here? We've got a fox with a ball in his mouth. That is class absolutely love that. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of want to see someone take these and make some sort of AOS army out of them. I don't know what you would possibly do with these. Maybe like, maybe gobos? Maybe in place of gobos or something? That would be a hell of an expensive army. Well, actually, the Blood Bowl teams aren't that badly priced. Like, they're pretty reasonable for how much you get. So, I don't know, maybe maybe it's more feasible. I can't, I cannot, I cannot start. I cannot start a gnome AOS army. There's no way. That fox is so... Uh, there's something about, like, I don't know how to put it. What is the word? There's, there's a specific phrase for this. Like, when you see something that's so... Like, you just want to, you just want to squeeze it. You just want to grab it and, like, squeeze it. I don't know what that's called. It's a real thing. I'm not just making it up. I'm not being, like... <laughs> I don't normally walk around wanting to squeeze animals. That's... Why am I even justifying this? Look, the fox is really cute. That's basically what I'm getting at. That's it, really. The determination, if anything, just makes it more cute. Like, it looks like it's really... Looks like it's really trying its best. Absolutely going for it. But at the same time... That action is making it look like a loaf of bread covered in hair with a tail. And I'm just... I just love it. I want it. I want that fox. Now, before I continue gushing unreservedly about these gnomes, let's have a little chat about Into the AM. This video is sponsored by Into the AM and their new all-day pants. And before those of you from the UK side of the audience start panicking about the idea of seeing more of me than you ever wanted to see, don't worry. We're talking US pants here. Not UK pants, US pants. Specifically, a pair that's light, stretchy, comfortable, with the added bonus of actually being presentable around other people, which is nice. The all-day pants are designed from the ground up to be great value for money and suitable for almost any setting, from work in the office to a night out. I mean, this could be classed as an office, right? This could be classed as an office, and I'm wearing them right now. They're so stretchy, it's great. 
I have been wearing them for the last day or so since they arrived. Funnily enough, this is not included in the marketing material. I can't imagine why, but, but, I've been so incredibly comfy whilst painting this tank, this one here. Ooh, don't show the, don't show the underside. I haven't got that far yet. The rest of it looks great. I've been so comfy whilst painting this tank. It's been absolutely great. Plus, once I've finished painting and I've got to go and pick my girls up from school, I actually look like I've made an effort to dress myself because they're high quality, they fit true to size, and funny enough, my usual comfy choice for long painting sessions is not any of that. The all-day pants are available at Into the AM right now, and if you use my link in the description and in the pinned comment down below, you'll get 10% off at checkout. Thank you very much to Into the AM for sponsoring this video. Let's get on with it. I like the little kind of spiky knuckle duster things that a lot of these guys have got as well. <laughs> That's really good. And the armor, like the little bits of armor plating that they've got, is it even fully metal? I feel like, I feel like quite a bit of it is wood with like a sort of metal edge around it. And the number of pipes, so many pipes. Look, just because you're having a game of Blood Bowl doesn't mean you should put down your smoking apparatus. No, you need to keep it with you. So we've got one pipe, We've got two pipes. Oh, I thought there was another pipe there, but that's actually one of them just holding the ball. We've got three pipes. <laughs> so, okay, we've got a three pipe count, which is more than I think most teams have. A couple of them are clearly little tricksters as well. Like, look, you've got, you've got a ball, but then they're holding another one with blue flame around it. Like, do they chuck the blue flame ball and it explodes on people? Because yeah, in the process of swapping it out, even with a little bell on the hat, like literally like a little jester's outfit. That's interesting. That's that's fun. I like that. Things like the leaves as well. There's little details like the leaves kind of being sewn into or attached to the armor is really, really fun. Also, the fact that the staffs are just, it's just a branch. It's just a branch with a bit of twine around it. It's not like a carved thing. It's just... Here's a stick. Here's a stick and a goose and a pipe, and I'm ready to play Blood Bowl. <laughs> I just, oh, I love them so much. I think that is really the only way to phrase it. It's whimsy. It's just pure whimsy. It's kind of fun from the ground up, made to look cute, but also they're still really detailed as well. They're still really detailed. Like, all the sharp crispness is there. It's like, it's almost like a... Uh, like an old concept or like an older approach to making something that you're doing in a modern way. I wish I knew how to explain what I'm trying to say. Like, I, I know I make videos and you watch them and stuff and you would think that I'd be better at communicating at this stage, but I'm not. I'm just not. I would love it if I was, but I'm not. I will say though, as I'm like scrolling through these, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like... I would not do a good job of painting these. They they are, there's a lot, there's a lot going on and they're not big, they're not big. There's a lot of like, there's a lot of skin, but it's like kind of small, but also weirdly proportioned. Intentionally so, obviously, but you've got to really nail the faces on these, especially, especially the, especially like the ones with the beards. Like, yeah, I feel like the balance between the beard and the skin I don't know that I'd be able to pull that off. I really don't. A lot of cloth as well. A lot of the cloth is like relatively smooth, but then you've got like quite bunched up areas in some sections, which is like quite a sharp contrast with how smooth it is in others. I mean, again, it's got the thing of having lots of different materials, which I really like on models, just because you get to, you know, you get to mess around with it a bit more, but oh man, there's a lot going on for, for quite a small miniature, you know? Like a miniature miniature. I don't think I'd have the I don't think I'd have the skills to take this particular Blood Bowl team on, honestly. I'm still intimidated by my dwarfs that I've never got round to painting. These, good grief, no. <laughs> it would not go well. Although, then again, then again, I say that, surely one of the things that you need to do if you're painting stuff and you want to improve is to push yourself and pick up stuff that you would otherwise not be wholly comfortable with. Surely. Still, though, still. Okay, before we move on, I, I really want to look at that fox again. Yeah, look at him go. <laughs> what? I don't know why I like that so much. I don't know. I don't know why. I just do. <laughs> it's so good. There are also Alton Forest Tree Men for some heavy hitters, which apparently can take root if you're not careful, so that's fun. 
There is another tree man as well. I forget which team the tree man comes in. Or is it a separate thing? It might be a separate thing. Either way, there is an existing tree man. And I don't think it's the same sculpt as this. I'm pretty sure it's a different sculpt. These do seem to be these do seem to be new. Oh man. They do look good though. I mean I'm a sucker for painting like bark and trees and like wooden planks and stuff. I love painting those. So I immediately <laughs> immediately I get drawn in by stuff like this because I'm like, I, I know what I would do. I would I know what I would do straight away. Also, things like having that kind of decoration. Like, it looks like it's almost been nailed in, but then grown over with the leaves and stuff going on the top. That's a really nice touch. Yeah, and that bit of, like, armour across the uh, across the, the forearm there. Also wooden for the most part. Oh, I like it. I'm also pretty sure that that is not a shoe from any of the gnomes playing in this team. So that's clearly a trophy shoe. That's a shoe that's been stolen off another player. Oh, love it. God, look at them. Look at them. So... Good. <laughs> the Snarling Badger. I mean, the Snarling Badger. If that isn't a pub name somewhere, it should be. That should totally be a pub name. The Snarling Badger. Come on, that's got to exist, right? Anyway, the Badger, the Fox, the Goose. Oh my god, how did I not notice that the Goose is wearing socks? Or at least the Goose was wearing socks, but a little gosling has stolen the other sock. Gosling is the word for a baby goose, right? I'm just made that up. I'm not just thinking Ryan Gosling. No, I'm pretty sure. That is such a good detail. <laughs> it's got better. Somehow it's just got better. How? I don't know. But they've, they've achieved it. They've managed it. They've managed to make it better. Absolute 10 out of 10 team this. 10 out of 10. Love it. Absolutely great. You know what? Having said that I don't think I'll be able to paint them now, I really feel like I want to get them to, to paint them to see if I can actually do them any justice. But... It might be a terrible idea, but I, I do really want the gnomes now. <laughs> they've they have shuffled, they've sent a fox to grab my heart and run away with it, and I don't know, oh, maybe one day. It's tempting, it's very tempting. Anyway, something else that we missed from last week. Games Workshop remembered that Lord of the Rings is a thing and they have a game set in that universe because look, look, we've got new Middle Earth strategy Mezbg models. That was very difficult to say, and I regret it immediately. Anyway, these are the Knights of Arnor. I quite like these. The posing is nice. The scale on the horses is decent. Like, the one thing that I'm not so sure on when it comes to, like, the Cities of Sigmar cavalry anymore is the size of the horse's head. It's, like, weirdly a little bit... just a bit small, whereas I'm not getting that from these. Then again, those on the Cities of Sigmar range, they are super heavily armoured, which also kind of messes with the sense of scale, and there's none of that going on here. You've got effectively a mostly unarmored horse except for that i don't know what you call it the thing that goes over the front of the head it's not a helmet is it no it's not a helmet that the little plate that's going over the front of the horse's head across the forehead down the nose like they're a lot more like well i say real you know what i mean you know what i mean they're not quite as stylized which does make sense the 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 middle earth stuff generally tends to be scaled slightly differently and proportioned a little bit differently and you know, they're obviously working with stuff that isn't just what they make up. Um, but yeah, I do like these. They look decent. The chainmail is good. There's a good amount of detail going on. Uh, just for a minute, I thought I could see the <laughs> the 3D print lines on the shield, but I don't think I can. I think that's just texture from the paint job. Get a really nice sense of movement from the horse's tail. That might seem like a weird thing to comment on, but they just look right, you know? I do really like the design of that shield as well. Mostly simple, but a good chunk of decoration on the front. It's good. It's good. I like it. Finally, something that at least one of you has been asking for for quite a long time. Since this model was revealed, which was... Oh, dear lord. Okay. <laughs> I hadn't realised that it was this long ago. The 9th of November, 2023. All right. I will... I'll hold my hand up here and say that I'm a bit late on this one. I'm a little bit late. I'm a t just a teeny, teeny bit late on this one, okay? But the thing is, we're getting there in the end. That's the important bit. We're right here. We got there. <laughs> oh, Lord. I really didn't think this was that long ago. I mean, that is possibly the latest I've been to almost anything. That's, that's, quite, that's quite impressive. But we got there in the end. We got there in the end, all right? This is the White Scar Stormseer console, and my initial impression is that... 
yeah, he looks decent. I do like the uh, the the feathers, the kind of tassels going on, the cloak cloak. It's not a cloak, is it? Coat. I'm not really sure what it is. It's got an interesting shape to it. It's sort of like a half coat, but only from the waist down. There's got to be a word for that that I'm not thinking of. There's got to be. Anyway, whatever it is, I quite like it. The studs across the material is really nice. There's lots of different things going on here, actually. So you've got that, you've got that kind of big decorative belt piece going on. The armor itself is quite ornate, but only in certain sections. And other bits have left it really plain, which is interesting. The gloves over the uh, over the power armor gauntlets is. I mean, I quite like it, but it is also kind of weird in a way. I don't know why. It just feels kind of weird in a way. I'm not. I've never been a big fan of the hoods on librarians or stormseers or rune priests or whatever. I've never been a big fan of them. I think there's something about the way that this guy's posed, or at least the angle from which they've taken the picture, that makes it look a bit off. I think it's because like he's got his head turned, but the he's like facing the camera directly, which makes it look a little bit a little bit off to my eye. But it is just a perspective thing. Um, yeah. the... I quite like that, actually. The more I'm looking at it, the more I keep picking up on little details here and there, which add to the model quite nicely. The staff is badass, obviously. Um, <laughs> you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong with a big old skull on a staff. Things like, it looks like there's a bit of like rope decoration across one pauldron. Then you've got sort of fur or fleece across the other one. But then that's attached with feathers, and then there's cloth under it. There's a lot of different materials going on here. They've given them a good concentration face. I think that's a good concentration face. They've done, they've done a good one there. Not a big fan of bare heads usually, but as concentration faces goes, that's up there. And we've also got what I want on every single one of every preview, which is to get a good few angles of the model. So that helm, I really like that helm. It's very plain. It is very plain. There's not a huge amount going on with it, but I do like it a lot. Looks to be a fairly standard power pack, although I do like the paint job they've done on it. That's really cool. I want to know if the detail of the cloth over the lightning bolt from the white scar symbol is like actually there, if it's just painted there. I suspect it's probably just painted, but it would be cool if the cloth had that little indentation on it. You can actually properly see all the studs on the other pauldron there as well. And little details like that little, uh, that little kind of glass vial that's hung off the rope around the back. Man, there's a lot of, there's a lot of fun details going on on this one. I, I really like what they've done here. I'm trying to think of the right sort of the right sort of um, word for it, but I don't know whether it's like sort of shamanistic. I don't know if that's the right if that's the right phrasing, but you know the the kind of the fur, the rope, the fleece, the feathers. There's something a lot more, which makes sense, a lot more like natural or sort of nature kind of uh, linked about about this one, which. Makes makes sense, I think, for what it is, but yeah, I like that it's there. It's it's adding a lot to the model. It feels like a lot of the kind of librarian slash console style models, but it also feels very much like its own thing because of those additions, which yeah, I really like this. This is good. Took a while, but once we got there, yeah, I like the Stormseer console. It looks pretty decent. So, there you go. A nice, relaxing entry into the week. I hope you have a good Monday, and I hope it doesn't drag on too long. There's going to be all sorts of stuff this week. There is a printer just there that I'm currently, well, not printing stuff on right now, but I'll be printing more stuff on, so hopefully there'll be a video on that tomorrow. There's also a whole bunch of miniatures over there that we need to talk about, so that'll probably show up on Thursday or Friday. Lots to keep your eyes peeled for. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much to Into the AM for sponsoring this video. Make sure to click the link in the description and in the pinned comment. Go and check them out and check out the all-day pants, which, again, US pants, not UK pants. Don't worry. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you for the next one.